there lived a merchant and his lovely daughter. Indeed, she was so lovely that everyone called her beauty. But the father suffered misfortune, and little by little he fell from great wealth into complete poverty. There was nothing left to do but to go and seek a new fortune. One day, he called his daughter and said to her, Beauty, I am determined to seek a new fortune. The journey will be hard, but if all goes well, I shall return again a wealthy man. Only I beg you to tell me what may I bring you on my return? Dearest father, all I ask is that you should come back safely. But surely I might bring you something more than I know. Something that would make you especially happy. Well then, Father, I beg you to bring me back a rose. I love them so much. daughter goodbye and set out on his journey. He traveled over many countries and visited many cities without success. So that in the end, he was forced to turn homewards. For many days he traveled, until one night he came to a great dark forest. Exhausted by hunger and fatigue, he nevertheless determined to go on. But once in the forest, he completely lost his way and was forced to lie down and wait for morning. When the sun came up, he found himself on a long avenue of trees, which led straight up to a splendid castle. He approached the castle and knocked. Yeah. 
there with some beautiful roses at the gate of the castle. I went through to get it for you. But 
I cannot rest, for I must return to the castle. The beast made me promise I would return. Then take me with you. I must go alone. Oh, I will not let you leave me again. I will go with you. Will there be any horses there? Yes, for a time at least. So reluctantly, the father agreed to let Beauty a Accompany him to the castle. They climbed on the magic pony and sailed off so smoothly that Beauty was not at all frightened. Over rooftops they flew and over trees until soon they arrived in the courtyard of the castle. The castle was deserted as before. The merchant took Beauty to the little room, and there again was the fire glowing in the fireplace, and a table set for two with a delicious supper. Beauty was very hungry and immediately began to eat, but her father was so terrified at what the beast might have in store for them that he could not eat at all. Beauty had scarcely finished her meal when... Good evening, old man. Good evening, beauty. Good evening, Mr. Beast. I am pleased that you could come. You may remain. As for you, man, you may take your departure. <laughs> it's all right, father. At least I think it's all right. He seems not to intend to harm me. So the old man was forced to leave. Beauty was very brave about his departure. She was not really afraid of Beast. Despite his ugly appearance, he had behaved like a gentleman towards her. She was simply very lonely. For a long time, she sat staring out the window at the stars, wondering what would become of her. Then at last, she fell asleep. While she was asleep, she had a dream. There appeared to her a handsome Greek youth Never in her life had she seen anyone so handsome. And he spoke to her.
It was a beautiful spring morning. But the memory of her dream remained with beauty, so that she did not know whether the Greek youth had been a real person, and she was dreaming her present surroundings, so miraculous they seemed to be. She found a garden full of roses, and the birds and animals spoke cheerfully to her as she passed. And she found a library full of beautiful illustrated books. And she found musical instruments, which played of their own accord any tune that she might be thinking of while near them. And outside her room, the magic pony could fly and waited patiently. She was just about to mount him when... But 
Given the pony to visit her father. The pony flew as swiftly as before, and in no time at all she was out of the forest and back at her father's cottage. Her father was astonished to see her and asked her how it was that she had been permitted to return so soon. Beauty told him all that had happened. She told him of her dream and of the garden and of the musical instruments. <laughs> Then she told him how Beast had asked her to marry him, and when she refused, how he had let her return home. She did not tell him that she had agreed to go back to the castle after a month and remain there forever. And so, the months passed happily for the merchant and his daughter. Often Beauty thought of the handsome Greek youth in her dream, and often she thought she heard him calling to her in her sleep. Sometimes she even thought of Beast, who after all had been quite kind to her, despite his ugly appearance. But she did not think at all of returning to the castle until the last night she had with another dream. transformed into the castle courtyard, filled with rose bushes. But there were no roses on them this time, only thorns. <laughs>
He's dead. It's all my fault for deserting him. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. There was a blaze of light, and out of it stepped the handsome Greek youth, crowned a prince. Beauty, you have saved me. Now will you marry me? Yes, my prince. And then the prince took Beauty in his arms. Covered with the most beautiful roses the world had ever seen. Then the prince explained how he had been put under a curse by a wicked witch, and how beauty had broken the curse by her faithfulness. And then the prince introduced beauty to his mother, whom beauty recognized as a stately woman who had appeared to her in her dream and urged her to return to the castle. Then Beauty asked if she might invite her father, and immediately, he appeared! And Beauty and the Beast were married in the castle and lived happily ever after as prince and princess. And that is the end of the story!